I'm Janice Sullivan from Sullivan J Photography, and this is where we talk about macro and landscape photography, post-processing, equipment, behind the scenes, you name it, and we will chat about it. Today we're going to talk about ISO, but ISO for you macro photographers. This is the basics. What is it? Why do you even use it? What the heck is it? We'll talk about that now. I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys just a straight Google. What is ISO? I typed it in and this is basically what I got. A system used to measure the sensitivity of digital imaging systems. Your sensor sensitivity to light. Okay, that's cool, but what is my sensor? <laughs> Let's go ahead and look at this camera real quick. Inside here is my mirror and you can kind of see it. I will share with you. So it's, it's a Canon, so it has mirrors. Like Sony's don't have mirrors, uh, so they don't have to worry about this portion of their setup but i have it on and if you're a macro photographer you should know about mirror lockup for sure if you have a mirror put your custom function as mirror lockup and what happens is we're going to open it up and actually be taking a picture i don't have the lens in but we're going to open it up and now inside here is open and the light's coming in to the sensor to make the photograph and then if I click it again, it actually takes the picture. So as you can see here, let's, let's show you. This is my picture. <laughs> Let me put my lens back on real quick. I'm lining up my two red dots, clicking it. Okay. So the ISO is the third part of getting a good exposure and a good exposure is when you take that picture and it's not too too dark and it's not too too light within the picture. In your camera, depending on your camera, you'll have areas to change your f-stop and shutter speed. If you cannot get the photograph that you want from those two elements, then you play with your ISO. Always try to keep the ISO about 100. That it, number right there is really good. It's less sensitive to that sensor that I was talking about inside your camera. But it's it's great because it's less sensitive. So what happens, it doesn't leave all that grain and that fuzziness and that crappy stuff that you see when you push up your ISO really high on your camera. So look up your camera, I use Canon, so look up your camera and, and just Google around, say how high can I push up my ISO and then play and see if it really does work well. When you have your camera on a tripod and you're getting really close to a subject and say you're pushing your f-stop uh, so that it's really small, say f22, you will need a longer shutter speed to let the light into your camera to make a good exposure. But if it starts going past like 30 seconds and long exposure, sometimes cameras have a hard time. So you don't want to go that far, that long. So what you could do is push it up to say ISO 400 or 800, and that will let the camera have more sensitivity. So when the light hits it and it makes a, a brighter exposure for the f-stop and the shutter speed that you're using. I like to have my ISO at 100. Usually you'll have a sensor in here or a meter basically and in the middle is where you want that little meter, that little thing to go in the middle. That's usually the best way to start and if the dot is not in the middle then play with your ISO to adjust it either to go darker or lighter or right or left to try to get it in the middle. Read your manual or look it up and figure out how to change that ISO. Now if you're out there shooting bugs, this is another example for you macro photographers. You want to get up close to the bug and you want, they, they're moving all the time. So that means you need a faster shutter speed. 
again, to get a faster shutter speed, you need the camera to be able to see or be more sensitive to the light because faster shutter speeds will open and close that aperture really quick and will not let that light into your camera. So if you bump up your ISO, you can get those faster shutter speeds with a good exposure depending on what your camera can handle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk right here. We're gonna go ahead and just look at this rose that was shot in my office, handhold really quick. I kept the f-stop at f8 at 1 25th. And the ISO here is at ISO 400. It's dark. Again, I kept the same f-stop and shutter speed. Now I increase the ISO to 800. The next one is 1600, same exposure. And the last one I did was at 6400. Let's look at these again. This is 400, 800, 1600, and 6400. This should actually help you see what I have been talking about. Cameras can handle these ISOs that are higher. Now, back in the days in the film, it couldn't handle that. You'd have to, it would be a grainy shot with those films. So now with the technology, we can push that up. That's why you see star shots all the time now. And it's a lot of fun. And if you wanna be creative, you can play with that ISO. So let's go over briefly about the ISO. Depending on what number you have it, hopefully it's ISO 100, that determines the light that's going to hit your camera sensor that actually takes the picture. You adjust your f-stop and shutter speed, and if you don't like it and you need more light into your camera, then bump up the ISO number to get a good exposure. I have a question for you. How many of you have actually really thought about your ISO and used it, and if so, what is your thought process? Are you using it because you want your shutter or f-stop to work? Or you're just pushing it to be creative? Or truthfully, you just didn't even know what it was. The best place to answer your questions is at SullivanJPhotography.com. Leave a comment below and join the conversation. And while you're at it, sign up for my challenge. Once you sign up, you'll receive free textures and an email from me about every other week to inspire you to get up close and personal with your camera. Plus, only subscribers receive the best sales we have to offer. Did you like this video? If you did, how about a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And remember, express yourself with your photography. A thousand words does make a difference. Cheers!